it is um, <laughs> it is Wednesday, December 13th. Um, I'm going to be going to the midweek meeting now. I'm wearing the full uniform for you guys tonight, and I feel sick to my stomach. Um, I'm not promising much for this video. This is probably just going to be a, um, a meet and greet, an opening song, an opening prayer, and the first part, and then I'll probably leave when they switch speakers so it doesn't look so bad. But I'm not going to say much. I'm going to put a link to a video where I did this before, but I was bearded and not wearing a tie. And you can see some of the looks they were giving me when I wasn't looking. Um, there's some screen captures in the video. Um, and you'll see the difference tonight, where I look just like one of them. Got the bag, I got the tie. And um, I'll use the right language, and we'll see. We'll see, we'll see what we can learn. I'm just figuring this out as I go. issues in our lives, but we've made it, and uh, we want to learn from you now, Heavenly Father, so help us to put away the cares and worries of the day, and uh, focus on what uh, we're about to uh, take in, and we certainly appreciate the effort of our brothers and sisters preparing their parts for our spiritual edification, and we can show that by paying close attention. Please bless us with your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, and continue to bless us as a united worldwide body. Please forgive us for our sins, too, and we pray through Jesus' name. Amen. Good night. As I mentioned, we had a great meeting. Scott, Brother Armstrong will be taking the first part of Treasures from God, from God's Word. We can look forward to ways with, in which members of the other sheep can support the anointed today. Brother Nightingale will handle the part digging for spiritual gems. Did we find the answer to the question, what do the two copper mountains represent? And we look forward to our students' portion to help us in improving our preaching and teaching skills. In our Living as Christians uh, part, Brother Darnell Street will cover the part improving our skills by contacting everyone in our territory. We will have a very encouraging video to go along with that as well. Brother Tanner will then take the last part of the book study. This will be the last part of the whole book, and then we'll move on to another book. So I'd like to call now on Brother Armstrong to start us off with his part, Take Firm Hold of the Robe of a Jew. Zechariah. Almost just a few more weeks that we're done the Hebrew Scriptures. We have a video to introduce the book of Zechariah. And I want you to pay as we pay attention to this video, just take into a, remember the time period, which is really important. They'll play into some parts we talk about a little bit later. Maybe we can have that video, the introduction to the An introduction to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah began to prophesy in Jerusalem in 520 BCE, 17 years after the return from Babylonian exile. 
He prophesied for at least two years, completing the book bearing his name in 518 BCE. His work overlapped that of the prophet Haggai. The rebuilding of Jehovah's temple was at a standstill. It appeared to observers that Jehovah had forsaken the city. The people there were discouraged and focused on personal comforts. Jehovah sent Zechariah to join the prophet Haggai in encouraging the Jews to resume the temple construction despite all obstacles. Did you know? Solomon's temple was completed in just over seven years. In contrast, when Zechariah wrote his book, the reconstruction had been underway for about 20 years, but without completion. The book of Zechariah contains 14 chapters. Chapters 1 to 6 set forth a series of intriguing visions that ensured divine backing of the work of rebuilding the temple and the return to pure worship. For example, one vision features a woman named Wickedness who is put into a container and taken far away by two winged women. This illustrates that wickedness has no place among Jehovah's people. Chapters 7 and 8 urge God's people to turn from unjust treatment of the poor and to deal with one another in loyal love and mercy. Chapter 10 foretells Jehovah's turning his favorable attention to his repentant people. Zechariah also recorded several significant prophecies about the Christ. He indicated that the future king of God's kingdom would triumphantly enter Jerusalem on a donkey. Zechariah foretold God's true shepherd would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Zechariah also foretold details about this messianic shepherd's death. Chapter 14 states that Jehovah forms a very great valley. This valley is for the protection of his people and results in a complete triumph of true worship. As you study the book of Zechariah, notice how Jehovah makes his work succeed despite adversity, how he describes the future king of his kingdom, and how his loyal subjects will remain safe in his valley of protection. We're going to zero in on chapter 8 of Zechariah. Before we do that, though, in the context of that video, did you notice the time period that it was written in? Zechariah wrote his book in 520 BCE. So this is just after the Babylonian exile. So Israel was really, after 70 years of not being a nation, rebuilding. Let's read Zechariah 8, verse 20 to 22. With that thought in mind, this is what it says here. This is what Jehovah of armies says. It will yet come to pass that peoples and the inhabitants of many cities will come. And the inhabitants of one city will go to those of another and say, Let us earnestly go to beg for the favor of Jehovah and to seek Jehovah of armies. I am also going. And many peoples and many nations will come to seek Jehovah of armies in Jerusalem and to beg for the favor of Jehovah. If you were in Israel, what would you think? You've just been released from seven years of captivity in Babylon. You're a deflated nation. You've got no capital. You've got no temple. And yet this is what Zechariah wrote. It would maybe seem hard to believe, wouldn't it? But really, friends, the key is where these people were going to. These people were coming from many mighty nations and from all different kinds of lands, but they were coming to seek the nation of Israel. No, they were coming to seek favor of Jehovah. They're coming to serve Jehovah. They're coming to uh, beg favor of Jehovah and not a nation of Israel. The people were submitting to Jehovah's law, not to the nation. It's important here because there's two groups. Right. There's the